あーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーあーおはよう、ほら、私は今、ビデオゲームを。そして、スペシャルゲスト、コーカプテン・シャーフ。何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何何These are the circle of friends, Shaw f and Rob, co host s on the Geek So to Speak podcast, the Sandbox Gamers podcast, and Trechnological, a Star Trek、Ooh. Shakedown. Thank you very much for joining me today, boys. And I thank you very much for saying that you wanted to come on and talk She Hulk season one. This is the entire、yeah. season, all nine episodes. We're going to be talking about today on the comic book kaiju. Let's get right into it, boys, because I haven't heard a whole lot of your thoughts on this season week to week. So let's start off with just our quick thoughts on the season. I've been doing them week to week, but our listeners and our viewers want to know what have Wonder Rob and Shoff been thinking about season one of She Hulk? So we'll just give our brief thoughts.、Uh, Shoff, let's start off with you. Season、okay. one, She Hulk. What do you think? So, this show honestly blew me away. It blew me away with how good it was. I, I, not to say I wasn't looking forward to it, but I just didn't. She Hulk has never been a character that really like, grabbed me, and I was like, I need to read about this character. I need to know everything about、mm. She Hulk. But as soon as I started watching this show, it, it made me want to seek out. Content,、uh, whatever past、yes. issues. I wanted to know、yeah. more about the character and really kind of dive into that, the lore of She Hulk. So I would have to say that Marvel hit it out of the park with this particular show. And it's Loki has been my favorite of the Disney、mm. Plus shows, but I would have to say a very close second is She Hulk. So, yes, that's where yes. I'm at. Very good. Very similar to myself. And what about. Wonder Rob, what do you think about She Hulk in comparison、Boo. to the other <laughs> women? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're the Hulk. Wonder、mean. Rob is part of the intelligentsia. Making... <laughs> yeah, you're the Hulk. I'm, I'm just fooling you guys. I've really enjoyed it.、Uh, what I've enjoyed about it in particular is that it is a format change. It's not the standard 45 minute to an hour long. Yeah. Uh, Marvel fair that we're all used to seeing. It's、right. a comedy. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. it there were a few, I have a few nitpicky things,、mm. but I would say 97% of it I thoroughly enjoyed. And then 3%、nice. I could have, I would have maybe changed. But overall, it's pretty, 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 pretty good, I would say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I'm very excited to talk about She Hulk season one. And we have not gotten word yet if there's going to be a season two. So this could be a series finale that just aired today as we are recording this October 13th, 2022. I hope not. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very,、uh, very hopeful that we are going to get a season two. Now,、yeah. I have some things to say about the finale,、uh, but we'll get there. When we go through, like I said, we're just going to we're gonna breeze through, slide through this whole season.、Uh, but when we get to the finale, I have some thoughts.、Uh, but the beginning, let's go back, way back to the first episode, a normal amount of rage.、Uh, when this first <laughs> premiered, I was like, Rob, the change in format, that it was a comedy, all of these things. And I was also like Shoff, where She Hulk was never one of my favorite characters growing up. I always knew about her in the background and, you know, the, her more famous cousin, the Hulk. But She Hulk herself has never been one that was a favorite comic of mine or, let's say, in animation or anything else. But when this came out, it was a welcome change being about She Hulk and about、uh, being a comedy, I should say, the format of the show. So I think it kind of caught me off guard. But when, when I saw that first trailer, And they showed her breaking the fourth wall. I said, All right, 
I'm in, boys. This is going to be <laughs> my cup of tea. So let's let's go back and give our uh, initial thoughts on that first that first hit of adrenaline that that first episode. Um, Rob, did you have any specific thoughts about Bruce Banner, Mark Ruffalo appearing in the episode and just kind of setting us up for what we were going to get? I like cool, casual, smart Hulk. Yeah. I like him a lot. A lot of people <laughs> online, a lot of these casuals <laughs> online are saying that a Hulk was downgraded. Uh, but I disagree. I, I'm a big fan of the, the casual Hulk. Yeah. And I like... I don't know. I thought I just think he's funny. I think Mark Mark Ruffalo has a a talent for being sort of dry with his presentation yeah. with the Hulk, and right. I like it. Now that doesn't mean I wouldn't mind going back to see like a uh, Savage Hulk or whatever you want to call him from uh, Thor Ragnarok, mm -hmm. right? But I'm enjoying this interpretation. The only thing I thought was sort of silly, and <laughs> is. Just oh, we were in a car accident and our blood touched. <laughs> oh no, we touched what you... blood. <laughs> but other than that, uh, it was good. It was good. Shuff, what did you I like think the about actress that? Tatiana? Yeah, Tatiana Mas Maslani. Yeah, I like her yeah. a lot. She's a, yeah. she's very charming and she's very good. Yes. Uh, Shaf, what did you think about that origin? The blood touching did, was that <laughs> so? I a good nice I way have... to do it. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have much issue with it. I know that in the comics, or at least like what her background is, it was she was like got hit with like a gunshot wound or something from like a mafia mm -hmm. hit or something gone. Yes. But and then she basically does a transfusion with Bruce, and that's mm -hmm. how she gets She Hulk powers. But yes, I, I personally, I think that the way that they really raced through that origin story didn't spend too much time on it. It wasn't the focus. It wasn't what was important to that episode. It wasn't about how she got it. It's just what she does with it. And um, mm -hmm. and I think in that respect, it didn't. The fact that they went and sped through an origin story, which could have very well been not just one episode, but this season, right? Like we've mm -hmm. we've definitely right. seen a lot of Marvel properties milk their origin way yeah. too much. Um, so the fact that they just got it right out of the way told me right then and there that this show was going to be unique and, and I was here for it. So, uh, so I, I think, I think she Hulk did the right thing by not wasting too much time on what would otherwise be a kind of uneventful, uh, origin story. The fact that their blood mm. <laughs> touched the way that wonder <laughs> Rob shares it is super funny. Uh, but I, I, I would say, honestly, it didn't bug me at all because that's the only thing I knew about She-Hulk was that mm, somehow their it. blood was going to get mixed up and that's how she becomes She-Hulk. Like that's, that's the one thing. And so we knew that um, you really can't have She-Hulk without Hulk. Uh, so we knew Hulk was going to factor in in some capacity in the episode. And I'm glad that Mark Ruffalo was there, but I'm also glad that he wasn't a presence throughout the entire season mm. because right. I think that would have been at the detriment of the show, which is the show is trying to communicate that she can stand on her own two legs. She doesn't, whether she's Jennifer Walters or she Hulk, she is a power and a force all her own and she doesn't need a man. Right. Uh, so right. I think like the fact that they really kind of put Mark Ruffalo in sort of a guest star capacity and he was needed in the first, and then we see him a little bit in the middle, and then we see him briefly at the end. Like that's enough. He's a, he's a he's um, bookends to a, a great mm -hmm. season that didn't need him otherwise. So that's how I feel. Yeah, I heard some some uh, rumblings online as it was going on that that was the only way they could have done it in a modern sense. They were like, we can't do the actual origin of her getting shot and then him having to take her like there was a lot of questions around that origin story of wait a minute why would bruce banner the, just the way that he does it uh the blood transfusion is is there's some sketchy stuff that goes on in that comic origin but people are like i guess this is a modern take on it and an easy way to get to it but like shaw said they only had nine episodes and i also thought it was interesting that i don't know if you guys saw this jessica gal the showrunner she talked about how that episode was actually in the middle to the end, like later on in the season, and they ended up moving it 
to the beginning. I thought that was kind of a weird place to have it originally. Oh, yeah, that's right. Like it made sense to have it at the beginning mm-hmm. to me rather than, oh, yeah, we're just all, already she's She-Hulk. And then we're doing a backstory rewind recap. So I thought that was a better way to do it. The way that it the way that we see it, I thought was a better way of uh, presenting it. And this actually was directed. Kat Koiro um, did most of the show. I'm looking at the episodes she did one, two, three, four, eight, and nine. So she did most of uh, mm. most of this series in general. Um, but I'm just very curious to hear because, like I said, as I was going week to week, I was not asking my circle of friends specifically what they were thinking about it. So as the season was progressing rob were you getting more into the show or was it just kind of st- a steady steady flow for you each week to week as you were watching <clears throat> each week i was like so where's daredevil <laughs> uh i was promised <laughs> matt <laughs> and i don't see him uh i don't think i got more into it each week because and this is not a bad thing what i'm about to say but there wasn't exactly a gripping story Right. Um, this show is very different in the fact that it's not. It it, it feels like there's almost no plot. <laughs> right. It's much show. more episodic <laughs> than serialized. Right. It's yeah. A so show it was. It was, it was like. Yes. Yeah, so like it. Re- it reminded me of watching a sitcom. Mm-hmm. In the right. fact that yeah, right. there's like a tiny overarching story, but you know you're really in different situations each time. A, a situational comedy, if you were, or as mm-hmm. you were, or if mm-hmm. you will, whichever is the <laughs> correct phrase uh, yeah. pertaining to what I just said. <laughs> so, uh, I I wasn't hooked like it was Game of Thrones or Breaking mm-hmm. Bad or anything right. like that. But I was, it was still making me laugh each episode, and so that's what was drawing me back each time and i think that is a win for this show overall that on rob's side it made you laugh and you know that's our our friendship i think is centered around laughter all three of us and just any type of comedy it's something that we gravitate towards in our daily lives so for on the rob side making you laugh i think is a win on the shaw side Making you like a character that you didn't like or have an interest in before, I think that's a win. And it did the same for my wife. She had no association or knowledge of She-Hulk before this show. By the end of the show, she was telling me every episode, this is my favorite character. Like, She-Hulk is my character now. So that's a win. I think that there's going to be a ton of girls out there. that uh, This is my character now. <laughs> so there's going to be a back <laughs> off. <laughs> and I, and I've purchased her a uh, few she Hulk <laughs> items uh, that she's liking, but I, I really think that's going to be a win for Marvel. And I was thinking about how is she going to appear in the movies now? Cause I really think they should mm-hmm. put her in the Avengers. We haven't heard anything about the secret wars teams that we're going to have for the, the two Avengers movies. So I think she's got to be a part of that lineup when it when it put finally her in does Fantastic arrive. Four. Ooh, you can put the, give her that me. little suit with the four on it. Ooh, you just got mm-hmm. me happy. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> you know uh, she definitely has conversations with uh, the Thing on a regular basis. Her and oh, Ben wow. have a good relationship. So in, in the comics, that is. So that would be yes, that right. Would definitely work out big time. I thought Shaw was making a double entendre, as he does. <laughs> as he tends she, to yeah, do. <laughs> she Hulk gets down on the thing, if you know <laughs> Matt's thing, if you know what I'm saying. So. It's um, <laughs> you know, guys, I wanted to talk about something that I kind of was like, over yes. the course of the season, it was sort of registering to me. And every episode, it became more and more clear. And I kind of wanted to just like throw it out there and see what you guys think. But I think mm-hmm. the ultimate theme of this show was duplicity. So um obviously we have Jennifer Hold Walters. On. Let me look up that word. <laughs> <laughs> was that a movie so, with Michael Keaton? <laughs> right. That's multiplicity. <laughs> <laughs> um but it, it's the idea that there's more than one side to everyone, right? And mm. and I think yes. that's really applicable to a lot of the characters because uh, not only are we seeing the life of Jennifer Walters, but we're also seeing She-Hulk. We're also seeing how those two personas 
can coexist and also how mm-hmm. one, like, especially in that group therapy episode, we're seeing how, uh, she's, uh, as Jennifer, she's jealous of she Hulk and how easily like men are interested in her and how, how she's confident and strong and everything else. Like she's analyzing her own other persona in that regard. You've got abomination who is subverting expectations because we expect him to be a, a villain. Um, uh, even up until the very end, there was a, a mis like understanding about his nature and whether or not he was still a villainous guy, you know? So like, Right. You're seeing the other side, the Emil Blonsky side, who has mm-hmm. reformed, changed. Uh, clearly, there's um, good in him, if you will. Um, yeah. Which and, and it's, I have it's some... present in so many other characters, too. It's so interesting. Right. Uh, Titania. Um, yeah. Or Titania. Which, what do you guys say? Titania or Titania? How do you say it? Titania. I say, I say, mommy. Hello? Mommy? Okay. Sorry. Mommy? <laughs> I knew it. Sorry. I knew it. I was waiting. <laughs> no, no. A titania. Yeah, but I say titania. Yeah. You're a hundred percent right. There's a ton of that going on throughout and specifically with um Jen herself, but you know, even like with Leapfrog, um, all of the with Matt Murdoch, with Daredevil. Like, yeah. There's a ton of two sides of the coin and, and uh it's very interesting, especially because this first season i'm hoping this is just the first season we see her getting accustomed to herself or becoming um used to her body i guess kind of expressing herself as who she is and is as she hulk but also as jen walters so i think that is a very good observation shelf um throughout the season we saw that um did you have a specific favorite episode boys because i know as you can see from my shirt that I'm wearing, I had a specific episode that was, I thought, the peak <laughs> of this season. And that was Ribbit and Rip It! <laughs> Which I, I just thought about Rob. Whenever I saw Leapfrog, I thought about Rob. Me? I, <laughs> I thought that was the ultimate episode of this whole season. I li- really liked the first episode with Mark Ruffalo and the Hulk. But once Daredevil popped up, it was over, boys. So did you guys have a favorite episode? There were some key episodes or key moments in episodes that really stand out. But if I were going to pinpoint a particular episode, I guess I guess I would be one to agree. The uh, the devil yeah. episode yeah. Uh, with devil. Frog Boy was <laughs> <laughs> was was probably tops. But there are moments in other episodes that make give give the episodes close seconds and i would have to say the close second episode would be um madeline with the y but not where you think with wongers <laughs> yeah. uh, madison followed madison. by the series finale or season finale Ooh, okay shaw um you know every episode was really strong to me I'm, I'm looking at the episode list right now just to see if there was anything that really stood out i did Really, really, really love the Is This Not Real Magic episode because that had mm. a lot of Wong. It that had Madison, uh, who was mm-hmm. such a breakout character. I love when actors or actresses come on and they only have like maybe a one episode um, feature. And maybe it's not even for very long, but they knock it out of the park and they become memorable characters and you want to see them again and you want to see them interact with characters again. And that's definitely Madison. She she was something <laughs> else. I, as soon as I finished yeah. that episode, I immediately went on to Mr. Skin. No, I'm just kidding. Immediately, <laughs> I, I went and I <laughs> followed her on Instagram. Um, and uh, and that was great. I loved the, the retreat episode was actually really great. Yes. Uh, because that it was, was another episode. example of... It's the the idea of seeing both sides of a person uh, and the side you weren't mm-hmm. expecting. A lot of subverting expectations. The the way that they kind of humanized the character Wrecker. Uh, f- uh, wait, is that his name? No, Wrecking Crew guy. I can't think of his name. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, think it was Wrecker. Mm-hmm. Oh, Wrecker. Okay, Wrecker's. Um, and yeah. then the wedding episode was really fun too. Just Jen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, there, honestly, there's there's no really bad episode. I felt I felt like everything was was strong, interesting, funny. Every episode had good laughs. Um, I know Vactor's upset that there's not an, an end of credits, uh, end credits like scene that happens after every episode because that mm-hmm. was kind of promised. 
Um, and I feel like that's definitely a misstep because that was an opportunity to really dig into like the, the corners of the MCU that we really haven't seen, like these lesser known oh, yeah. D string characters, you know, that like, yes. you normally wouldn't right. see leapfrog. You normally wouldn't see porcupine, uh, man, man bowl, porcupine, yeah. uh, matador <laughs> guy, whatever, like, uh, yeah. El Aguila. Like, I think that just, yeah. that's just so much fun, like to, that you can fill in the background with all these cool characters. So I love that. Right. Okay. Let's get to the finale, boys, because I got some thoughts on this one and, and I have not expressed my thoughts on this individual episode. So it's true. episode nine, who, sh who show is this was <laughs> the finale, the wrap up, and it had a huge fourth wall break. Uh, where She-Hulk actually breaks out of her Disney Plus window, uh, <laughs> goes over into Marvel Studios Assembled, which is their making of or behind the scenes show that they do, um, and meets Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, an artificial intelligence, which is behind the whole show. So here's my thoughts, boys. I want to get yours as well. I really liked the the format of the fourth wall break because it's right in line with the comics. She did it in the eighties. She jumps out. She talks to the writer, John Byrne. She's, you know, breaking the fourth wall. She even goes between panels, rips up pages and does things like that. So all that, it was great that they did that in this live action form. So I, I really like the format of the fourth wall break, but I have some issues with the result of the fourth wall break. And this is this is my issue. Everything seemed too easy. So the whole season is building up to this point. We've got the mystery of who sort is the of. Hulk King. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> well, I would say. <laughs> that's also that, – that goes to your point of it being episodic versus serialized. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily a season-long arc to get yeah. to this point. But in the background – We've been wanting to know who is the Hulk King, who's been taking her blood, who's been trying to do this. And I don't think it was a very satisfying conclusion for me. Mm. And when I okay. saw that, where she goes to the look, what looked like the portal um, robot, Rob, where it's like, look, looks like GLaDOS comes down from the ceiling. But it was Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and he I even didn't had love the little hat. That was yeah, my favorite part, that he had the hat. I had laughed. I told my wife, I was like, that's Kevin Feige. But that part was funny. The, but the way that it's kind of this deus ex machina of, oh, yeah, that's it. I just changed my story. That's the end of it. I just snapped my fingers. Everything has changed. And there's no repercussions. Like, you didn't necessarily have to deal with Emil Blonsky having to like change his like the whole time we thought he was reformed but then oh wait he was doing this on the side but oh yeah he is reformed because he accepted that he was going to go to prison like at the very end so i was like it was just throwing me for a loop that it was going back and forth and then it didn't seem like anything got everything was like that fast and the furious ending the at their their cookout table at the end there and oh yeah everything is great um, there's, there's no, nothing is bad. Like there's, there's no sinister evil thing in the background that's setting up the next season. It just felt too clean to me. Like the ending just felt, and it was the shortest episode of the, of, I don't know if, the, if it was of the season, but I heard that this is the shortest finale of all the MCU shows. It was 35 minutes and that, that was probably even less than that. So to me, I just felt like a little underwhelmed at the ending mm. of this season. I said, I wanted there to be an actual Hulk King, you know, payoff of, oh, this guy was plotting and he, you know, he did get her blood and there was an actual uh, ramifications or there was repercussions to that. And then Hulk coming down, I don't know what was, what is going to be canon going forward of, we saw his son Scar the CG looked really rough. I don't know if that's how they want to introduce him or if they have even introduced him. Like, I don't even know if this is canon or not. So <laughs> I just was left with a lot of questions at the end. Like, what is going on here? Well, so I want to get your guys' take on this. So, Sean, Rob, what, what'd you do you mind if I go finale? first? Is that okay? 
<laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> okay. So I think, well, here's one thing. So I think that the MCU, I think Marvel and Disney in general has done such a consistent job of pre- presenting a story in a specific way that now you mm-hmm. are accustomed to that. And that's why you were expecting yeah. to have that big moment, that big reveal and that big final battle, because that's how all of these, the formula goes. And it's funny because they episode, even commented on that. Exactly. This, this episode, yeah. they, they kind of poke fun at themselves by sort of in a mm-hmm. self referential way, indicate that they're aware that they have a formula like that. Right. I mean, it, Kevin was sort of boasting. He's like, yeah, pretty much everything I do is great. You know, like um, <laughs> the, everyone likes. I, I found the algorithm. Yeah, yeah. He's got the algorithm figured out. So, yeah. Um, so I think that that in itself, like they're recognizing that they have basically created this machine that, and it's, isn't it referred to it in that way? Sometimes we talk about the Marvel machine, like the idea mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. We're, they keep spitting out products that are very similar in structure. And we kind of know they, they follow the formula. The Marvel formula is the same. A lot of times they have the same type of a bad guy facing off against the same type of power set of a good guy. And so if we had gotten that, that would have been what you would have expected and hoped for. But it also would have been cheap because... She-Hulk represents everything that the MCU has never been yet. And so I think in Mm -hmm. that regard, what they did was the absolute smart and honestly freaking brilliant maneuver of her jumping through Disney Plus, jumping into Assembled, which is such a brilliant way to get her into the writer's room, such a brilliant way to get her onto the premises of Disney Marvel building and talk to (laughs) Kevin. Like, so great. Um, But the one thing that this finale does for me is it kind of calls into question whether or not She-Hulk is a real person slash hero in the MCU because Mm. she's understanding that she's in a TV show. She's understanding right. that she's controlling the outcome of her, of, of her, the events of her life. Mm-hmm. So is she real is, is the question that kind of comes up to me is like, even as like an actress, if she was understanding she was in a TV show, there would be limits that she could have. So stuff that she's doing, it really kind of calls into question. Is she even real in the MCU or is she like a fabrication of the, the Marvel company that exists within the MCU? You know what I mean? So normally, right. Well, normally I would say because we haven't seen any, like Avengers stuff, we haven't seen any hints of a second season. I would be like, oh, wait, I don't think so. I don't think she's real. But then, Rob, we've seen her Disneyland, you know, the Avengers King Thanos thing, and we've seen Mm -hmm. images of her. So, and I'm pretty sure they're going to have her walking around the parks as well. Um, I I haven't seen anything yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) shop, that's for sure. But, (laughs) Rob, what do you think about the the way that she ended this season and do you think it was it tied everything up nicely or did you kind of feel underwhelmed like i did well i want to point out i just want to chime in on the is she real or is she not real oh yeah subject yeah. really fast um yeah. i think she's real because my and this might just be headcanon because i'm not super familiar with she hulk outside of just passing mm-hmm. occasional comic book appearances but mm-hmm. i always imagined that her fourth wall breaking is a side effect of her becoming a Hulk. Mm. And so up until, up until that moment, that was something that never happened. Yeah. Or at least in the show, she didn't do it before she got her powers. Right. I don't think she did. No. So I would still assume that. Yeah. A lot of people kind of said that that was her power was not only that she turns into a giant green monster, but that she can break the fourth wall so some people online, I've seen that as a speculation of, oh, yeah, that is part of her power set. Mm, is that like she that. can now she's she becomes cosmically aware of the yeah, fourth something wall. just snapped up here. And now she's got this ability. And so she's yeah, she's the one who can see outside. She knows. Right. But she's versus. Not, yeah. Deadpool's like it's his insanity. Right. Like it's oh, yeah, he's that's just part of him being crazy that he can break the fourth wall. Mm, she hopes mm-hmm. it's, it's more like. That's part of her power set. But, yeah, I, I kind of, um, in my head canon, too, it feels like this is just something different. And I feel like 
they're going to introduce her into the movie. So I want oh, her to sure. be real. I would for imagine. Sure. Um, and I'd like this. I'd love to see her in. in uh, I said Infinity War in uh, the <laughs> the King Dynasty or yes. Secret Wars. Yeah. Uh, looking at the camera and just making a comment the same way Deadpool is probably going to be doing, or even yeah. just the two of them sharing a scene together going, can you believe, can you believe Kevin, <laughs> Kevin wrote this? <laughs> Don't show the guy. look in the camera. <laughs> show the look in the camera. She'll be like, now they'll be like, time for you can see break. them too. <laughs> or yeah. something like right. that. Right. Um, as far mm-hmm. as how they wrapped up the show, I am on team Shoff with this one. Yeah. Uh, because, and I've, I've told <laughs> this to you on our, on the, our previous podcast, Geek So to Speak, I've said this mm-hmm. to you individually offline, that the one thing I cannot stand is superheroes fighting villains that are just mirror versions of themselves. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's boring to me. Mm-hmm. I, it's not super interesting. And as soon as Hulk King jabbed himself with that pen, I said, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> We're doing another Hulk. Fantastic. Right. There's already the abomination. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and now we're getting this little weirdo. Mm-hmm. Um and the fact that it she did the old Zach Morris timeout and hopped out and took care of it. I really enjoyed. It. And I don't mind that there wasn't a big oh what's going to happen because uh, pretty much to what Shaf said is that they subverted your expectations and said actually no, she's going to end the show how she wants it to end mm-hmm. because she's the only one aware of it. And having a quote unquote happy ending or a rounded out smushed ending to me still feels in line with the sitcom or comedy formula mm-hmm. that that the series that took the entire run of the episodes because nothing serious really happened mm-hmm. in the like, oh, she's out on a date and on the oh, she didn't get a phone call. Oh, she she's walking down the street and some guys tried to kill her, but she just flicked her finger and punted him across the street. Like that was right. really the the most dramatic moments of the the show. Yeah, nothing really compared to like uh, Captain America picking up Thor's hammer or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So it, to me, it feels in line. And the the my biggest takeaway outside of Scar and his terrible haircut uh, <laughs> was Matt Murdock chilling out at the family function, and they're like sort of like rubbing rubbing elbows a little bit and my wife was watching it with me and we looked at each other after the episode we were like so are they like are they like f buddies or (laughs) uh is this is this a relationship that's going to like bleed over into uh daredevil born again yeah or something like that or uh Mm -hmm. echo or probably not echo but daredevil born again um so i really i really enjoyed it that they didn't go the route that they typically tend to like the vision fighting white vision, Wanda fighting mm-hmm. Agatha, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be interesting going forward. Oh, go ahead. Joe. Yeah. I was just going to say, uh, I think what we all expected to happen was they brought in intelligentsia. Anybody who knows about intelligentsia from the comic books knows that the leader is typically the leader of the mm-hmm. intelligentsia, the person behind yeah. it. And we ha- we know that Tim Blake Nelson, I think that's his name, is going to be back, yeah. um, but in the Captain America New World Order uh, movie. Yes. So I think we all expected that he was going to be at the top of this chain, or it was going to be somebody like Thunderbolt Ross, and we were going to get Red mm-hmm. Hulk. But even she, even in She-Hulk, um, as Jennifer Walters, she joked about that are we going to get a, a red hulk uh, are we going to get a hulk yeah. this time but this, they're going to be red like so right. they the way that they sort of like are pandering to what the expectations of the show would be or or what where we think things are going based on breadcrumbs if you will uh it just plays into that whole thing the idea of subverting expe- expectations with these characters and they did that time and time again throughout the season and i think done beautifully and uh, it is a bummer that Intelligentsia was ended up just being operated by a dude who's a, yeah. a douchebag. Some, like, some fuck boy. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask, did you guys think that Intelligentsia popped up because, like, in response to him not having a successful date with She-Hulk? Or was it already, like, in effect and he had a date with her because he can't stand her so much? Like, I was trying to understand, like, what was the impetus for creating um, intelligence? Mm-hmm. I feel like, like it's the former. 
Okay, so it was the result of him not having a successful date. Oh, like, that's how I interpreted it. Because yeah. he's kind of a spoiled that's brat. Like, um, right. Things just, you know, he's got he's got lots of money, um, probably inherited by his parents, whatever else, and and he walks around like he's his stuff doesn't smell, you know. So like, I think it's just <laughs> like a being jilted it brought out this like this yeah. thing, and it, it doesn't it kind of like model like the idea of that revenge porn thing. Like I'm going to get back at this girl in the worst way mm-hmm. because she didn't, she didn't accept me or whatever. So like right. in that sense, right. when you look at that, it's, he's the perfect person to have at the top of that pyramid of who's in charge of intelligentsia. So um, yeah. I think they, you know, even though it wasn't what we had hoped for, because I know I was gunning for leader. I really wanted to see a giant <laughs> freaking headed, green headed dude uh, finally coming <laughs> back after how many years since he right. was teased in incredible hulk so um but i think what happened still amazing and this show really blew it out of the park in my opinion i think it was an excellent season finale yeah and i'm really looking forward to oh by the way guys did you know there is a red she hulk Ooh, in the comics um betsy ross yes that is bruce banner's uh former wife and also the daughter of Thunderbolt Ross, who is the Red Hulk. Um, so there's some family connections there. Just a little comic knowledge, because this is a comic book podcast. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to what happens next with her. The post-credits stinger was Wong coming in to save his Scooping buddy, up. the Abomination. Mm-hmm. They're bros. Why? They're, w- what is the reason they're... Like, we saw them... Thunderbolts, baby! Wong's on the team. <laughs> oh! It's all making sense. That was it. That's the reason. The whole show now makes sense to me because it is all. I just sort of assumed. I assumed Wonderbolt or Wonderbolts. (laughs) Thunderbolts. Wong and the Thunderbolts. The Wonderbolts. Uh, I assumed the Thunderbolts because I feel like they're not. They're not showing all their cards with what's going to be going on in the Thunderbolts. Mm -hmm. Personally, I just sort of have that feeling. Uh, and I feel like the abomination is going to be standing in the back and you'll have red Hulk eventually. Um, so that's sort of, I, that's where I think where I think that's going. Yeah. Well, I, you guys, we've been talking this whole time and we have not mentioned the opening of this episode was the classic 1970s, early eighties, incredible Hulk TV show. Yeah. The intro. Uh, to the TV show, which was fantastic. It was like a shot by shot recreation. And we had seen clips of them in those seventies clothes earlier. Uh, yeah. Before and the it show made no out. sense at the time. I'm so glad right. it finally made sense to me. As soon as I saw that scene, I was like, I had forgotten. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So cool. And I told my wife, like she had never, she's never seen that show before. So I showed her the opening and she was like, <gasps> It was a revelation to her, but I, I think was even like, uh, Marvel put out a side by side. I think. Ooh, I saw I like one on TikTok. Oh wow, really? Yeah. I have to look at that. Yeah, fantastic that, production design there. That show um, had was it Bill Bixby? Is he? He's the one who yes. played um, Bruce Banner. Okay, yeah. And then Correct. Lou Ferrigno, which was the Hulk in that. Yes, he was the Hulk. I was. I don't think I ever told you boys this, but that was one of my favorite things in life when I was growing up. I was watching that Incredible Hulk show, and he, even though it ended the year I was born, actually the year I mean, Rob and I were born, 1982, the show lasted from 77 to 82, I would watch it in reruns all the time because back then there was no Marvel Cinematic Universe. That was my Marvel Cinematic Universe because they had <laughs> the trial of the Incredible Hulk where yeah. him and Thor got together, and it was mm-hmm. like, and Stan Lee this was in is that crazy. Episode. Yeah. That was, I loved that Incredible Hulk uh, show, as many others did. So I was over the moon when I saw that uh, recreation. They did a fantastic job there. But I think this was a fantastic episode of the comic book kaiju, my friends. I think both uh, the Wonderbolts, Wonder Rob, and Shaw did a great job recapping and giving us their thoughts on season one of She-Hulk. Boys... I don't know if you have any specific uh, places that you want to see She-Hulk next, but if you do, why don't you let our listeners and our viewers know 
right now. Shaw, where do you want to see She-Hulk next? Go. <laughs> um, I, honestly, I just want to see her stay consistent. Um, if she's going to break the fourth wall, if she's going to be that one who's yes. kind of like yes. outside and aware, I don't want her to lose any of that charm because first of all, Tatiana mm. Maslany, excellent. She's incredible. And she makes me, her performance in this makes me want to watch Orphan Black, which I never watched when it was Same. on TV. Yeah. That show's um, pretty good. But she's I'm incredible right now. She's great. Um, also, uh, where else I would like to recommend is get into your comic books and, and check out the Dan Slot oh, yeah. run. Um, yes. 2004, 2005, uh, excellent run. I'm also reading the current run of She Hulk right now. Yes. And mm, Rainbow Rao. Cover... What's that? Yes. Rainbow Rao is a writer. Thank you. I was trying to remember the name. The, the cover artist. I don't, I don't know who it is. And so I was looking it up, but I got, I got asked to talk first. So now I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying, but, um, but the cover art is so incredible it makes me want to get like a big poster in my office because it's so visual so colorful so sexy sensational <laughs> she hulk I, I i i could Sexy. not say more i'm i'm really enjoying uh reading about she hulk in comic books right now on comiXology and marvel unlimited yes very i highly recommend um also charles soul had a very good run um right after dan slot and this show, actually, if anybody's interested, this show uh, takes a lot from that Charles Soule run. So if you're if you're not uh, into that, or if you haven't checked that out yet, I should say, definitely check it out on Marvel Unlimited or Comixology or wherever you get your comic books. Uh, Wonder Rob, where do you want to see? I want to see her in The Devil Born Again. Put Ooh. her in there. Put her in both Avengers movies. Put her in Armor Wars. And uh, put her in the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Also, Ooh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like um, that. I looked up the artist shop, Jen Bartel. Jen Bartel. Thank you, Jen. You're yes. making some truly incredible art, and I want every single cover. Yeah, very fantastic stuff. Um, also, fantastic stuff is the Sandbox Gamers, which is. Both Wonder Rob and I's video game podcast, which we host along with Jeff W. You can find that wherever fine podcasts are found. But also, there's some fantastic work being done over on the Technological Podcast, where Shaw and myself are reviewing whatever the current Star Trek show is at the time. We're also dabbling into the movies by doing some co-captains commentaries. That's so right. Definitely check that out. Um, we're having some fun over there, Shaw, and we hope that you will have some fun with us as well. So thank you, boys. I cannot thank you enough, and I want both of you to join me again on any type of comic book show, movie. We got, I know Wonder Rob is looking forward to Black Adam. We got that coming up, so <laughs> hopefully we can get some some more uh, some more geeky goodness from you two, and even if there's a comic that you want to read uh, and talk about, you're always welcome to come on the Comic Book Kaiju. Uh, I very much appreciate both of you coming on and joining me. Um, as you know, you are both two of the best guys in the world. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me. I can't thank you enough, boys. Thanks for having. You're us. welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wonder Rob, mm -hmm. Shaw, oh. both of them love comics, and you should too. Yeah. GG.